Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see then. Think you know everything there is to know about the one and only Hermione Granger? Even the biggest Potterheads will be surprised by these little-known facts. J.K. Rowling has revealed some fascinating secrets about our number one girl, and they prove that Hermione is one of the most misunderstood characters in Harry Potter. From her family background to her love life, we're deep diving into things about Hermione that everyone gets wrong. Well, you can tell Ronald. I'm not an owl! Emma Watson's casting meant fans assumed Hermione was white, and there was a lot of chatter when Noma Doomswenny was cast in the role for the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child stage play in London. But in December 2015, Rowling tweeted, Canon, brown eyes, frizzy hair, and very clever. White skin was never specified. Rowling loves black Hermione. And she told the Observer newspaper, Hermione can be a black woman with my absolute blessing and enthusiasm. It's a heartbreaking moment when Hermione uses the Obliviate spell on her parents. She's doing it to protect them, of course, and many fans think Hermione never saw her parents again after they started their new life in Australia. But in a Bloomsbury web chat in 2007, a fan asked J.K. Rowling if Hermione was able to find her parents and undo the memory damage. The author answered yes. She brought them home straight away. Rowling also explained that Hermione hadn't wiped her parents' memories. Instead, she bewitched them to make them believe that they are different people. Hermione and Harry have an important thing in common. They're both an only child. But in a World Book Day chat in 2004, J.K. Rowling revealed that she'd always planned that Hermione would have a younger sister. However, the author never got around to giving the little sister an appearance, and by that point, it felt like it was too late to add her into the later books. In that World Book Day chat in 2004, the author also revealed that Hermione's middle name was Jane. But by the time it was actually mentioned in the final book, when Dumbledore's will is read out, Rowling changed it to Jean. There are a couple of possible reasons for this. Dolores Umbridge had been given the middle name Jane in Book 5, and Rowling gave birth to a daughter Mackenzie in 2005 and gave her the middle name Jean. To Hermione Jean Granger, I leave my copy of the Tales of Beedle the Bard. It's not just Hermione's middle name that Rowling changed her mind about. The author revealed in an article on her website that in the dim and distant past, Hermione's surname was Puckle. So why did Rowling change it? Because it didn't suit her at all. So the author switched it for something a little bit less frivolous. It's easy to assume that know-it-all Hermione is very self-confident in her abilities, but that's not actually the case deep down. J.K. Rowling revealed on her website that she knows Hermione was seen by other people as a right little know-it-all. However, she hopes it's clear that underneath Hermione's swattiness, there is a lot of insecurity and a great fear of failure. Her bog art proves that, McGonagall telling her she's failed. Behaving like a babbling, bumbling band of baboons. Hermione was top of most of her classes, but that wasn't her major motivation for studying so hard. On J.K. Rowling's official website, it was revealed that part of the reason Hermione worked so hard was that she was terrified of getting things wrong and letting people down. It's a natural assumption that being intelligent was the most important thing to Hermione, but then why wasn't she sorted into Ravenclaw? After all, in The Order of the Phoenix, Hermione says the Sorting Hat did seriously consider Ravenclaw for her. But as Hermione tells Harry in the first book, brains aren't everything. It's loyalty and bravery, both Gryffindor traits, that count. Friendship and bravery. On the topic of Hermione's house, if you thought the Sorting Hat was in charge of Hermione becoming a Gryffindor, think again. The film shows a quick, straightforward sorting, but Rowling revealed on Pottermore that Hermione was almost a hat stall, a student whose sorting takes longer than five minutes. Because Hermione showed a strong preference for Gryffindor on the Hogwarts Express, saying, it sounds by far the best, it's likely that's what influenced the hat. If you need any more evidence that brains aren't everything to Hermione, then you only have to look at her attraction to Victor Crumb. That was definitely a heart overhead situation. They weren't compatible, with Hermione telling Harry that Victor's not particularly loquacious. Mm -hmm. Mostly he watches me study. We like to think of Hermione as knowing everything and being level-headed, but she can be duped by charm. After all, let's not forget how she was fooled by Gilderoy Lockhart. She fawned over him in class, not realizing that he was a con man. Of course, Hermione and Ron's relationship is a major talking point amongst fans for many reasons. But did you know that J.K. Rowling wanted Hermione to be the one in charge of their romantic developments? When a fan asked the author what she felt when she finally wrote the kissing scene, Rowling replied that she loved writing it and loved the fact that Hermione took the initiative. I'll do the introduction, that's all. Hermione, you're honestly the most wonderful person I've ever met. 
J.K. Rowling insisted that they kept the troll scene in the first book when her editor suggested she cut it. Why so? Because as the author says, Hermione, bless her, is so very annoying in the early part of The Philosopher's Stone that I really felt it needed something literally huge to bring her together with Harry and Ron. That was Emma Watson's favorite scene in the movie because she got to perform her own stunts. I went looking for the troll. I read about them and thought I could handle it. Of course, Potterheads know that Hermione's wand is made of vine wood with a dragon heartstring core. But did you know that reveals her true character? J.K. Rowling used a Celtic tree calendar for the symbolism behind each wood, and vine symbolizes passionate emotions. All characters' names are important, of course, but J.K. Rowling put a lot of extra thought into Hermione's. The author explained in a 1999 radio interview that she consciously set out to choose a fairly unusual name for Hermione. That was just in case somewhere out there there was a Jane with big front teeth who was really swatty and annoying. The name actually comes from Shakespeare's A Winter Tale. Although she isn't like that character, Rowling thought it seemed the sort of name that a pair of professional dentists who liked to prove how clever they were would choose. And what exactly did I say, may I ask? My name. In the early days, Rowling used to get asked how to pronounce Hermione's name more than anything, to the point that the author even said she wished she'd called her Jane. Rowling revealed that she used to hear Hermione a lot, but her favorite was Hermie Wan. She found it really cute, but she also cunningly inserted the proper pronunciation into Goblet of Fire when Hermione tells Victor how to say it properly. Most fans will know J.K. Rowling based Hermione on herself, but did you know that the character isn't actually an exact replica? In a radio interview in 1999, the author described Hermione as a caricature of what she was like when she was 11. She went so far as to call Hermione a borderline genius, and a real exaggeration, because she wasn't that clever. Rowling also hoped she wasn't as annoying as the incredible know-it-all. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. While Hermione was good at a lot of subjects, she wasn't good at everything, despite many fans thinking she's top of the class in all subjects. Take flying, for example. In their first flying lesson with Madame Hooch, Hermione struggled to get her broomstick to raise to her hand. Professor McGonagall gave Hermione a time-turner in Prisoner of Azkaban so she could take more classes. But, of course, Hermione and Harry used it for far more important tasks, saving Buckbeak and Sirius. Did you assume Hermione kept the magical object? J.K. Rowling revealed on Pottermore in 2015 that she'd made a problem for herself by including time travel. So she solved the problem by getting Hermione to give back the time turner, and then the author smashed all remaining time turners during the battle in the Department of Mysteries. When a fan asked J.K. Rowling what animal she would turn into if she were an animagus, she replied that she gave Hermione her ideal animagus as her patronus because it's her favorite animal. And that's the otter we see Hermione conjure in the Room of Requirement in the Order of the Phoenix. Rowling even voted for an orphan daughter to be called Luna. At least no one on the Gryffindor team had to buy their way in. They got in on pure talent. What surprised you the most about Hermione? Sound off in the comments below and be sure to give this video a big thumbs up to show your love for all things Harry Potter. Thanks for watching!